The traditional flying geese patchwork design. Can it be made into a stitch and flip quilt as you go block? Let's do it. Welcome back to Pattern Pool TV. If you're new here, I'm Monica Poole and every week I post a video about how I make my quilt as you go quilts. But also, did you know that you can sew along with me? I have a series of stitch and flip quilt as you go blocks with a free blog post and a private Facebook group where you can join in and learn with our lovely community of beautiful and supportive people. And if you're following along with us, you'll need to make two blocks. Oh, and I also have a website with heaps of PDF patterns on it, lots of quilt as you go resources. I've got a couple of eBooks, so feel free to check it out. So the flying geese block is a beautiful and versatile block that would look great combined with other blocks, but it would also look fantastic as a repetitive design on its own with the geese flying in all different directions. There are many different variations on the flying geese block, but I'm making a 10 inch block to fit in with all of my blocks that I'm making for our free quilt as you go along. And if you're not joining in with the free quilt as you go along, no problem at all. Just stick around because this is a great technique to learn. This is what you will need to make one block. For the geese, cut three two and three quarter by five inch rectangles. Choose a non-directional background fabric and cut two three and a quarter by ten and a half inch rectangles. Six two and seven eighths of an inch squares and two two inch by five inch rectangles. For the backing fabric, cut a ten inch square and cut a nine inch square of batting. Position your batting onto the backing fabric with a half inch gap all the way around the edge. Hold it in place with some basting spray or a couple of dabs of glue. Now I have this gap of batting around the edge because I'm joining my blocks together using my easy cover strip method. But if you want to use the regular joining strip method, just cut your batting to the same size as your backing fabric. Here are the measurements. Take a screenshot or head to our blog. Every week in my videos I give lots of tips and tricks, such as if you don't have a fabric marking pencil to mark the guidelines onto your batting, you can use a 4B lead pencil. A 4B lead pencil is a nice soft lead, it means that you don't have to press hard at all, because I always say that if you press too hard, dark lines are going to show through on light fabrics. Now anytime that I mention using a fabric glue, if you don't have fabric glue, you can just use craft glue, and so long as it's Washable, non-toxic and acid-free, it's safe to use on your fabrics, but always test things before you use them. So let's mark up the block. First of all, mark a center vertical line. So our block is 10 inches, so the center line will be five inches from the fabric edge. Then mark a line that is two and a half inches away from the fabric edge. And a line on the other side that is also two and a half inches away from the fabric edge. Now mark a vertical line that is a quarter of an inch in from our two and a half inch line. And the same thing on the other side. So a quarter of an inch in from our two and a half inch line. This is the top of our block and this is the bottom of the block. From the bottom fabric edge, mark a line that is one and three eighths of an inch up from the bottom edge. So there's our one inch line and there's our three eighths of an inch. Mark that line about half an inch past our outer lines on at the beginning and at the end. Mark another line that's two and three quarters of an inch up from this line. Once again, extending the line outside of our vertical line. Now mark another line that's two and a quarter inches up from this line. And another line that's two and a quarter inches up from this line. You'll know that this top line is correct if it finishes one and three eighths of an inch away from the top edge of the fabric, so that it's going to be the same distance as the mark at the bottom of the fabric. So if you didn't get all of that, don't worry, there's a diagram in our blog post. Mark a diagonal line onto the wrong side of each of the two and seven eighths of an inch background squares. Position your first rectangle with the bottom edge aligned with our first marked line and also just making sure that it sits into our marked lines here. I'm just going to hold it in place with a couple of dabs of fabric glue 
And I'm going to head to the machine and start making our flying geese. So at the machine I have a neutral coloured thread, something that's also going to look good with my backing fabric. I have a stitch length of three and I have a size 80 quilting needle on and this week I'm actually using my quarter inch foot. So this week I use my quarter inch foot, even though my quarter inch foot has a guide and sometimes it gets kind of caught in the batting, but I use a quarter inch foot because I normally use my standard foot with the needle position moved over to give me that quarter inch guide. But because I went from stitching on a marked line onto then having to have a quarter inch seam allowance, it meant that I just didn't have to keep moving my needle position over all of the time. Now just before we start sewing, I just want to mention that technically speaking, the height of our rectangle is two and three quarter inches. So our square should actually be a two and three quarter inch square, but I've added an extra eighth of an inch just to make sure that we're not going to cut off any of our points. This is the top of the block and this is the bottom of the block we're actually going to start sewing our triangles from the bottom of the block. Take your first square and place it right sides together with this edge of the rectangle. Now align your square so that it is level with this edge and this edge and make sure that your diagonal line is pointing in the way that's going to be the top of our triangle. We're going to start and finish our stitching a quarter of an inch in from each edge of the fabric and this is going to prevent our stitches from crossing over and looking messy on the back. You can either set your machine with an automatic tie off at the beginning and at the end or just use a little reverse stitch at the beginning and end of each row of stitching. Mark your first dot a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric on the diagonal line. Now this dot will actually run level with this quarter inch line here. And then mark your next line a quarter of an inch away from the corner and this line will actually run level with our centre line. So from dot to dot sewing exactly on the marked diagonal line. Flip the square over to form a triangle and just make sure that the top edge aligns with this line here and our side edge aligns with this outer marked line here. Now remember this is the bottom edge and this is the top edge so take your next square and place it right sides together with the opposite side of the rectangle. Align the side edges together and also align the top edges and just make sure that this line is going in this direction so you can see that it's going to form a triangle. Mark your dots a quarter of an inch away from the edge on the diagonal line and with this dot here you'll see that it's actually in line with the seam line of our underneath triangle. So from dot to dot. Fold the square over and just make sure that the edges are in line with our side edge and our top marked line. Now if everything's okay you can trim away the excess fabric on the underneath so trimming a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line. Head to the iron and press. So here's our first triangle. Just make sure that the outer edges here align with our outer marked line. So I'm quite good on this side. This side here I'm a little bit shy but I'll still be able to catch that in the seam allowance when I sew my side piece on. Also make sure that you have a quarter of an inch from the top of the triangle to this top line here. I have a little bit more which is totally fine because it means that I won't be cutting any of my points off when I sew on my next piece. Now let's make our next triangle. Take your next rectangle and place it right sides together with our first section. Align this outer edge here with our outer marked line on this side and also on this side here and make sure that it's running level with this marked line here. We're now going to make our dots and our dots are going to be a quarter of an inch in from the top edge here and it's going to run level with this line here and mark your line on the bottom edge here. So from dot to dot. Flip this piece up, making sure that it meets this marked line here. 
So here's my point here. You can see that I haven't cut it off and I do have a little bit of space um, between this seam with some background fabric, but I would much rather have that than to have cut my point off. And I think it makes it a lot more beginner friendly. Take your next square and place it right sides together with the underneath the rectangle. Make sure that you align the side edges and the top edges. You will have extra fabric extending below this seam line here. Mark your dots. So this time your dot is going to be level with the underneath seam and it's going to be a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And then mark your dot at the top, making sure that it runs in line with our center marked line. So from dot to dot. Flip the square over to make sure that the side edge aligns with our outer side line and the top edge aligns with our top marked line here. So if all edges line up, you can trim away the excess of the underneath just by trimming a quarter inch away from the marked line or the stitching line. So you can either do this step after you've sewn both triangles on or you can do it one triangle at a time. Do the same thing to the other side. Mark your top dot. The top dot is level with this seam here and it's also in line with our center marked line. Mark the bottom dot. This dot is in line with our this seam here and it's also a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now head to the iron and press. This is how it's looking so far. Everything's nice and square and level because I'm making sure that my raw edges of the fabric are line up with my guidelines. So now repeat the process to make your final triangle. So you can see that some of my fabric edges aren't meeting the marked line, but that's okay. I'll still be able to catch that in with my seam. So this line here, this inner quarter inch line that indicates the stitching line. So I'll just be able to catch that edge in there and also down there. So why did this problem happen? It's because I didn't sew exactly on the marked line. So what happens to you? you know the reason why. So now sew on the smaller background rectangle pieces onto the top and bottom of the block. Take a smaller background rectangle and place it right sides together with the top edge of our flying geese, making sure that it's level with the top edges and our side outer marked lines. Mark your dots a quarter inch in from the edge of the fabric at the start and a quarter inch in from the edge of the fabric at the end. Now sew from dot to dot.
Press again before you sew on your outer side borders. Okay, time for the final outer side borders. Place your outer side border right sides together with the side edge of our flying geese and line the border up with our outer marked line. And this time when you sew, you can sew all the way from edge to edge of the block and then repeat the process to sew the other side border on. Press the block and trim the block. At this stage I'm just trimming to the same size as the backing fabric and before I join them all together I'm going to double check that they're all the same size and I'll trim them slightly if necessary. This is what it looks like from the back and you'll see that my stitching lines aren't crossing over because I stop a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. So with the first block that I made, I cut these squares here at exactly two and three quarters of an inch and I was able to get my corners of my triangles in but it was more of a challenge. So that's why I decided to go with the squares being two and seven eighths of an inch, so just that little bit bigger. So when you do this you'll notice that you'll have more of a space above the triangle and a little bit more space on the sides and as I mentioned before I did find this way to be just a little bit more user friendly or beginner friendly. If you do want to take up the challenge, you can cut your squares at two and three quarters of an inch. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share it to a friend. Thanks for watching. Bye.